In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You're all very welcome here on behalf of Michael's family as we celebrate this requiem mass for the happy repose of his soul. We gather with his siblings, Joe, James, who's deceased, Pat, Breda, Kathleen, and Bernadette, and Rosie. Of course, his own children, Cheryl, Ashling, and Lorcan, whom I can cherish so much. We begin by uh, having some symbols of Michael's life brought forward to the altar by the family members. The yellow rose represents friendship. Michael had many customers who became very dear friends. The stories and memories have warmed the family's hearts over the past few years. A beard lass and gardening gloves represent Michael's working life. In his early life, Michael worked as a barman and was known to many throughout the Northeast. Since 2005, his hobby of gardening became his job, for which he was well renowned. Michael enjoyed watching horse racing 
maybe even the odd bit. The racing page from the paper represents this. And finally, a family photo. Family meant everything to Michael. They were at the centre of his life. He loved them all very dearly, both his own siblings and his children and grandchildren. So let us pray. O oh God, whose nature is always to forgive and show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Michael, whom you have called to journey to you, and since he hoped and believed in you, grant that he may be led to our true homeland, to the light in its everlasting joys, to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated now for the readings. The first reading will be read by Caroline and the second reading by Rosaline. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, as beautiful as a bride all dressed for her husband. But then I heard a loud voice called from the throne, you see the city, here God lives among men. He will make his home among them. They shall be his people, and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more mourning or sadness. The world of the past has gone. Then one, the one sitting on the throne spoke. Now I am making the whole of creation new, he said. I will give water from the well of life free to anybody who is thirsty. It is the rightful inheritance of the one who provides victorious. I will be his God and he is son to me. The word of the Lord. Romans, 
The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. If we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, by my life it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. It was about the sixth hour, and with the sun eclipsed, a darkness came over the whole land until the ninth hour. The veil of the temple was torn down the middle. And when Jesus had cried out in a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And with these words, he breathed his last. But on the first day of the week, at the first sign of dawn, the women went to the tomb with the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. But on entering, they discovered that the body of the Lord Jesus was not there. As they stood there, not knowing what to think, two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared at their side, terrified, the women lowered their eyes. But the two men said to them, Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? He is not here. He has risen. The Gospel of the Lord. And please be seated now. First of all, may I say that I'm very pleased to be able to celebrate this Requiem Mass for Michael. The Carney family of Ratbali and our own family were very close to our children growing up. I suppose Michael would be younger ones, but James and Joe would have been more my time. But I was delighted now to, to be able to, to celebrate this Mass for one of a family that our family loved very much, and, and vice versa. We spent many lovely Sunday afternoons there um, over having of playing in the early years of our, of our lives. But today we come together to celebrate Michael's life on this earth and also to celebrate the new life in God which we pray he is now enjoying. Michael was born on the 10th of November 1952. He grew up in Rathbody with his parents Paddy and Taggy and his seven siblings, Joe, James, Pat, Breda, Kathleen, Bernadette and Rosaline. He often recalled to his family stories about their childhood on the farm, and he never lost his love for the land. He also spoke many times about the fun and laughs they shared with his siblings and neighbours, walking to a Clint school. He made many lifelong friends there. Those days, we all walked to attend school. At the age of 16, in 1968, Michael started working as a barman in Dundalk, which was to be the start of a long career for him. Shortly after that, he began working in Fairways Hotel 
and he had eight enjoyable years there. And after that, he worked in many local establishments in Midloud, Smith's, Lynch's, the Danny Boy down the road, before moving to the oasis outside Carrick Macross. In 1997, myself and Anne took over Brady's Bar here in Edmundstown, Stroke Breastown, at the Crown, which is now the, the restaurant. And um, they ran it for three years before moving into McCardle's Bar in Carrick Macross. Michael made so many friends to his bar life. He had a great personality and was found it very easy to make friends, and he was loved by anybody who ever knew him. He had a great personality for everybody. It was um, during his time in the fair wisdom that he met Anne, his wife, and they went on to get married on the 9th of July, 1997. Sorry, 1977. They had three children, Cheryl, Ashling, and Lorcan. whom Michael cherished dearly, and he was so proud of them all. Now he has wonderful, eight wonderful grandchildren, whom he loved beyond words, and he got such fun and enjoyment from them, and they with him. Michael's family was his greatest love in life. He got such pleasure from spending time with them, especially all the family holidays to share it over the years, and celebrating the family events such as birthdays and Christmas. In 2005, Michael decided he had enough of bar work and started gardening, a job that he absolutely loved. He always had a great, he always had a great love for the land. So no matter what the weather, he headed off every day with a smile on his face. He was so happy to go off to work every morning at the gardening. He was, as you may know, a perfectionist and it showed in his work. He gave every job his all, as so many have said. He did the work of two men, in fact. As much as he enjoyed the actual work, he enjoyed the crack with all his customers equally. Over the years, he built up strong friendships with the customers, and they became his friends. Many times, he would call into them on the way home from another job, just for a chat, and they always really welcomed that. So many of them have called to the house over the last few days, and they're feeling the devastating loss of him too, as well as the devastating loss of his family. Michael wasn't a man for hobbies as such, but if he had to name one, it would be he enjoyed was horse racing. Over the years, he got great enjoyment from, from the horse racing and enjoyed many a day out in the Curra, Leopardstown, and more recently, horse racing on the beach in Lave Town. He'd always throw his eye over the racing pages in the paper every day one of his great interests. Michael was a man of simple pleasures and enjoyed sitting down at home with a can of Guinness or a glass of red wine beside the fire in wintertime. He looked forward to going to the Newmore Hotel on a Sunday evening for a few drinks at the end of the week of work. And he'd done this for over 20 years. In fact, I met Michael and Anne many times in Newmore on a Sunday evening I was, when I was with there with some friends as well, and we renewed acquaintances and friendships then, there again. I also would have baptised um, one of Michael's grandchildren when I was in Black Rock as well. Michael was fortunate um, to enjoy good health for 67 years, until last October when he became ill. Over the last eight months, he fought his illness with great brave bravery and great dignity. He battled it in the same quiet way he approached everything in his life. Michael never made a fuss about anything. He was one of life's true gentlemen. I can vouch for that and so can hundreds and hundreds of other people. He was an absolute gentleman. 
Um, he was one of those true gentlemen, he really was. The void he leaves behind will be felt by so many, but especially his own siblings, as well as his children, Anne, Cheryl, Cheryl Ashling, and Lorcan. And of course, by his grand grandchildren, whom he loved immensely. I often think that um, in the ancient Celtic tradition in Ireland, um, our spiritual ancestors had a very refined sense of the mystery of death. For the Celts, our ancestors, the eternal world was so close to the natural world that that wasn't seen as a very threatening or devastating event. When you, enter the, when you enter the eternal world, as Michael did, you're going home to a place where no shadow, pain or darkness can ever touch you again. This is now the beautiful place home where Michael lives. We pray that his gentle soul is now held in a deep embrace of God's immense love in eternal happiness in heaven. the prayers of the faithful. These will be prayed by Killian, Oshin, Donica, Dara, Blohin. We are all God's children. As such, we live a divine dignity which death cannot touch. And this confidence let us place our prayers before our loving Father in heaven. We thank God for Grandad's life, for the love, fun and laughter he brought to so many of our lives. He will always hold a special place in our hearts. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for ourselves, Grandad's family and friends who mourn his death. May we be comforted by the true knowledge that after all the sufferings of life, Grandad is now at peace with God. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We ask the Lord's blessing on all who are ill. We close them in their time of sickness, and if it be your will, restore them to full health again. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for all the doctors, nurses and carers, particularly do all those who were so good to Grandad in the last months of his life. May the Lord reward them for their kindness and gentleness. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. We pray for all departed brothers and sisters. We remember especially Grandad's parents, Paddy and Taggy, his brother James and all the deceased of the Carney and Tomty families. May Grandad be reunited with them in God's kingdom where there is no more pain or suffering. Lord, hear us. Lord, gracious, hear us. O Lord, support us all the day long until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed and the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then in your mercy grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at last. <coughs> We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen.
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we humbly present to you these offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Michael, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your Son to be a loving Saviour may find in him a loving Father who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you in him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of eternal life to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is ready for us in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed <coughs> and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, Eamon and Michael, our bishops, the clergy, and all your faithful people. Remember your servant, Michael, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that, Michael, who was united with your son in a death like his, 
We ought to be one with Christ in his resurrection. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Joseph, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray with confidence to our Father in heaven and the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Our and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you under my roof, but only say the word and your servant shall be healed.
to more than I can be. Yeah.
I will have the communion reflection. If only we could see the splendour of the land to which our loved ones are called from, we would understand. If only we could hear the welcome they receive from old familiar voices all so dear, we would not grieve. If only we could know the reason why they went, we'd smile and wipe away the tears that flow and wait content. Thank you very much, Cheryl and Ashley, for that beautiful reflection. Let us pray. Lord God, the Son left us the sacrament of his body as food for the journey. Rush you grant that, strengthened by it, a brother, Michael, a come to the eternal table of Christ in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Now have a final commendation and farewell to Michael. And before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of Michael. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
<clears throat> Receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to Michael's aid. Hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ who called you, Michael, take it to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. <clears throat> Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend Michael, and the sure uncertain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon Michael in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant Michael. I help us who remain to comfort one another with assurance of faith and we all meet in Christ and with you and our brother Michael forever. Amen. Now in peace let us take Michael to his final resting place in Kalani Cemetery.
Nigel's family have lined up here at the side of the hearse. And there will now be an opportunity for those congregated to file past the family and nod or salute in a gesture of sympathy and condolence. We will not be shaking hands. And if I can ask you to be mindful of social distancing at all times, please. If I can ask you to approach from the back of the hearse this direction and exit towards the front of the hearse. We appreciate your patience. <coughs>